In the headlines, coalition of governorship election results set to resume. Jubilation in Kano as NNPP candidate declared winner of election. State government imposes curfew. Governors of Bochi and Nasara states win second term in keenly contested election. And on the foreign scene, Geta Chu appointed as new interim leader of Ethiopia. Hello and welcome to news updates on Trust TV. I am Sagir Ibrahim. Hello and welcome once again. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, will resume coalition of the Adamawa State Governorship election results from local government areas until noon. Prof. Mohamed Mele, State Coalition Officer, and Yakubu Ari, the State Resident Electro Electoral Commissioner, REC, announced this on Monday after coalition of results from 20 out of the 21 local government areas. He said that the exercise was postponed to enable verification of results from Fufore local government area, which were snatched. Shortly before the shift, two agents of the leading parties in the election, People's Democratic Party and All Progressives Congress, APC, urged INEC to ensure justice in coalition of the results before declaration. Security agencies were also deployed to major roads in the state capital to ensure security, following a protest by majority of protesters in the metropolis after the adjournment. We will now join Aaron at Sahel, Trust TV's correspondent in Adama State, for updates. Aaron, Aaron, what's the update so far in Adama State? What are we hearing? What do we know so far? We are right here at the State Foundation Center where Amazon uh, from Fukuro is still yet to be announced. So, but the convention was supposed to start by the government and this is already in past year. So, we are still waiting for the arrival of the Alaska Electoral Commissioner and the State Foundation Officer from the state. So, although there are so much security agencies out here trying to keep the place calm, even as yesterday in the night we have witnessed several flashes from youth across the state. So, but we are still waiting for the results from our reporting right now, for the verification of the uh, state uh, foundation office. All right, talk to us about security. We hear there's, there's been a bit of tension over there in Adamawa State. Um, what about security agents and what about the protesters? Has the issue been resolved? Yes, so far the state is calm. Um, the security uh, uh, have been built already everywhere. The state is currently on shutdown. There are no vehicle movement and we are just waiting. And you know, last time uh, after the announcement of two uh, local government, which is Son and um, Chica, you know, the, um, the state, I mean, they read after the closing of the day, you know, uh, trying to get out of the premises of INEC where angry youths uh, mobilized themselves to stop him. So that was where we had some kind of clashes between the police and uh, the security, the police and the angry who have stopped the resident electoral commissioner from going out of the police. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Aaron, for that update. We'll reconnect with you later to get more information as it develops. Away from that, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has declared the candidate of the new Nigeria People's Party, Abba Kabiru Yusuf, as winner of the March 18 governorship election in Kanu State. The state returning officer, Professor Doko Ibrahim, who is also the vice chancellor of Amadou Bello University, Zaria, said Yusuf polled 1,019,602 votes to de defeat APC candidate and incumbent deputy governor of the state, Yusuf Gauna, who scored 892,705 votes. I, Professor Ahmed Doko Ibrahim, hereby certify that. I am the returning officer for the 2023 Kano State Governorship election held on the 18th day of March 2023. The election was contested. The candidates received the following votes. 
that Yusuf Abba Kabir of NNPP, having satisf satisfied the requirements of the law, is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. Also, residents of Kanu came out in their numbers to celebrate the declaration of the candidate of the new Nigeria People's Party, Abba Kabir Yusuf, as winner of the governorship election, despite a curfew imposed by the state government. Kanu state government on Monday imposed a dawn to dusk curfew to avoid breakdown of law and order following tensions generated from the coalition of results of the governorship and state assembly elections. He said the decision was to prevent hoodlums from causing chaos in the already tensed situation. Trust TV's Idris Jibrin has updates. Well, it's been less than an hour since the governorship election result was announced by the Independent National Electoral Commission here in Kano. I can say that it's uh, celebration time for the people of Kano State. You can see that few minutes after the result was announced, uh, supporters of the New Nigeria People's Party have taken over the entire streets of Kano Metropolis, celebrating the success of their elections. And uh, you can see behind me how people are coming out from everywhere, celebrating the success of the election. However, the information we are getting right now is that the Kano state government has equally declared uh, a dogs to dogs uh, curfew uh, preventing people from going out. In a statement released by the State Commissioner of Information, Mala Mohammed Garba, says that the idea to declare the curfew is to ensure that there is no violence and there is no total breakdown of law and order. But then people have turned out in mass to celebrate the success uh, of the election that was just declared by the Independent National Electoral Commission here in Kano. And so far, I, report, I can report that we have not had any case of violence since the result was announced. What we have seen on the street of Kano, a massive celebration and jubilation by the people of Kano State here today. Still in Kano, suspected hoodlums have set the residence of popular Kano political singer Rabiu Kahutu Rarara on fire barely an hour after the declaration of the Kano state governorship election won by NNPP candidate Abba Kabir Yusuf. Rarara is also, known, is also a known APC supporter and its candidate. An eyewitness, Yusuf Abdullahi, said the thugs invaded the house and started destroying valuables and setting it on fire. However, minutes after, policemen were mobilized and dispersed the thugs. But the fire was still raging as fire servicemen were expected at the scene. And still talking politics, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has declared the candidate of the People's Democratic Party and incumbent governor of Bauchi State, Bala Mohammed, as winner of the 2023 governorship election in the state. Declaring the results, Bauchi State governorship election returning officer Professor Abdul Karim Sabo Mohammed at INEC office on Monday in Bauchi said the PDP candidate, Bala Mohammed, polled 525,000. 280 votes to defeat the APC candidate, Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar, who scored 433,272 votes. He said the candidate of the New Nigeria People's Party, Senator Haliru Jika, came third and scored 60,496 votes. PDP 525,000. 280 525 280 PDP having satisfied the requirement of the law is hereby declared the winner and is return elected thank you We are now joined by Trust TV's Adamu Imam for updates. Hello, Adamu. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah can you I can please, hear you. Can you please bring us up to speed um, about the situation over there in Bauchi? Okay. Uh, at the moment, you, we have just witnessed the declaration of the uh, governorship election held in, on Saturday here in Bauchi State, uh, which you all know that. Uh, 
the incumbent governor, Bala Abdelkader Mohamed, has declared the win of the contest after defeating other 14 candidates uh, in a Kinley contest. Uh, what uh, already we know that uh, the Bochi governorship election has come and gone already, but with a lot of uh, enthusiasm and then calling from one angle to other that uh, probably the election is going to be tough. And uh, we have witnessed the, 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 the process from the beginning to the end. And eventually the incumbent governor defeated all that. And then the first uh, issue is the, the candidate of the uh, All Progressive Congress, which is uh, retired Baba uh, Sadiq Abakar, uh, a retired soldier, a retired officer, per se, uh, Air Force officer. Uh, he make he he made comments about the worry of the election that the results that he have uh, uh, started seeing right from the onset, even before uh, finishing collation and uh, everything. He said that uh, there was a lot of uh, irregularities happening in the Bochi local government, which is a wider, uh, which is a wider, very large ward here in Bochi State, which comprises a lot of units. Uh, that what makes the delay of the announcement of results even yesterday when they started the collection. Okay, Adamu, let's talk about word on the street now. Um, in Kanu, we are hearing that there's been a sort of a jubilation and also a bit of a breakdown of law and order um, following the, uh, the, you know, the breakdown of law and order where, you know, a popular musician's house was burnt down. And also in Adama, he, we heard there's been a bit of a protest, even though, you know, the result has not been announced yet. In Bauchi, what's the situation yeah. so far? Has there been any form of protest? No, 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 not really. Uh, the issue of the security is uh, quite normal here in Bauchi because uh, there are heavy security everywhere in the capital, capital. Uh, which deployed between the uh, police security outfit as well as the uh, civil defense and their soldiers. Uh, they are going around from one end to another to make sure that the, uh, the, the peace maintained, even before the announcement of the result and even after now. And uh, from the look of things, the jubilation uh, started erupting because, uh, uh, particularly from the PDP supporters, and the governor uh, have won his uh, re-election bid uh, to continue or to, to, to go for a second time. So the, the mood of the town now is quite peacefully. No problems of insecurity bridges are here and there. But all you can hear is jubilation from one end to another leading to the government house at the moment here. All right. Thank you so much, Adumu Imam, for that update. We'll touch base with you later as subsequent events oh. unfold. All right. And in Katsina State, Diko Umarada of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, has been declared winner of last Saturday's governorship election in Katsina. The INEC chief returning officer in Katsina, Professor Mwazu Abubakar Guso, in his declaration said Diko Rada, having scored the highest number of votes in Saturday's elections, is declared winner. Abdullah Yamadi was at the Katsina Coalition Center and now reports. Umaru Dekorata of the APC, having satisfied the requirement of the law, is hereby declared winner and is returned and is returned elected. The winner of the governorship election, Diko Umarata, scored eight hundred and fifty-nine thousand. 892 votes to defeat his closest rival, Senator Yakubu Ladu Tambarki of the PDP, who scored 486,620 votes. The All Progressives Congress APC took 32 state assembly seats, leaving PDP with only one, while the result of state assembly seat for Kankia local government was declared inconclusive. Beyond that, the results of 88 polling units were cancelled across the 34 local government areas of the state, largely due to violence, insecurity, and overvoting. The number of registered voters in Kasena gubernatorial election stands as 
0302-3516719. Number of accredited voters, 13-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-
documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back. If you're just joining, you're watching News Update on Trust TV. Now, recap of our major stories. Coalition of governorship election results set to resume. Jubilation in Kano as NNPP candidates declared winner of election, state government imposes curfew. Moving on to other stories, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has also declared Governor Abdullahi Suli of Nasrawa State as the winner of the governorship election held on Saturday, March 18, 2023, in the state. The governor defeated his close rival, David Umbagadu of People's Democratic Party, PDP, by a margin of 62,000 to emerge victorious. Umar Mohammed completes the story. In the results announced early hours of Monday morning by the state coalition returning officer, Governor Sule scored a total vote of 347,209, as against Umbugedu's 283,016 votes, and having certified all the requirements, he was declared the winner of the governorship election in Nasarawa State. Daily Trust reports that the ruling party led in seven out of the 13 local government areas in the state while the People's Democratic Party won six. My name is Professor Tanko Ishara, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Jos, and the State Returning Officer for the Governorship Election for Nasarawa State. Having satisfied the requirements and having received the total votes of 347,209 votes by the APC with the candidates Sule Aldo and Haji is hereby returned and declared uh, the winner of the governorship election in Nasarawa State. Local election observers in Katsina State described widespread vote buying by political actors as the major impediments to governorship and state assembly elections. The election observers said that voter inducement, especially at polling units levels, nearly marred the process. Abdullahi Yamadi interacts with some election observers at INA Coalition Center in the state and sent in this report. These election observers put a question mark on the process marred by irregularities occasioned by voter inducement in most cases. We have seen you know, cases of vote buying and uh, voters inducement using you know, uh, food items and uh, uh, clothing materials. I have seen it with my naked eyes. Absolutely, this time around the vote buying is too rampant and it's everywhere. We have seen a lot of vote buying in the polling units, which is against the 2023 electoral law. And the issue of voter inducement is within the political parties. They have the people that they call as the mobilizers. I think I, I interviewed some of the mobilizers. They told me they are out to induce voters to come out and vote. Though there are complaints that the voter inducements that characterized the election were done in the presence of security operatives. The election observers are, however, satisfied with other aspects of the elections. The security situation is very okay because the election was generally peaceful. If you know, you remember Kazana is one of the security compromised states, and there were so many uh, insinuations earlier that the election would not be such peaceful. But uh, honestly, we must uh, thank God for making this election, uh, you know, peaceful throughout the period. This election observer says the governorship and state assembly elections can generally be adjudged to be peaceful. The battle to Mahamudu Buhari House in Kazana is more intense between Diko Omar Ratna of the ruling APC and Senator Yakubula Rutamariki of the main opposition PDP. Coalition at the state INEC headquarters had commenced, and the process which will eventually culminate into declaration of winner 
of the election. No cancellation. No cancellation. And uh, anywhere where voting did not hold at all? No, sir. Okay, so all is 100%? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, stakeholders, any observation? Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Crossed Television News, Kazana. And on the foreign scenes, the dominant party in Ethiopia's northern Tigray region has nominated its spokesperson, Getachu Reda, to lead a regional interim government established by a peace agreement that ended a two-year war in the area. In a conflict that killed tens of thousands of people, the Tigray People's Liberation Front, TPLF, fought Ethiopian forces and their allies. After a string of battlefield victories by federal troops, a truce was reached last November. If the federal government approves Getachew's nomination, which was reported by the TPLF-controlled Tigray TV, he will succeed TPLF leader Debretsion Gebre Michael, who has governed Tigray since 2018. It is unclear, however, when the federal government will make a decision on Getachew's candidature or when the interim administration will be established. Still on foreign news, the Chinese government has condemned the killing of nine Chinese nationals at a mining site in the Central African Republic, where a civil war is currently raging. And the president of China, Xi Jinping, called on Monday for the perpetrators to be severely punished. Gunmen stormed a Chinese-operated gold mining site that had recently been launched in Central African Republic, killing nine Chinese nationals and wounding two others on Sunday. The rebel coalition, initially blamed by some for the attack, put out a statement later in the day. Without providing evidence, it accused Russian mercenaries from the Wagner group of being behind the violence. The attack early Sunday came just days after gunmen kidnapped three Chinese nationals in the country's west near the border with Cameroon, prompting President Faustin Archange Tudera to plan a trip to China in a bid to reassure investors. And with that, we've come to the end of Trust News Update at this hour. Do well to follow us across all our media platforms. I'm Sagir Ibrahim. Thanks for watching.